Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am doing a full face yet again of one brand. Y'all seem to really be enjoying that lately. And today I'm doing Jane Iredell. This is not the first full face of Jane Iredell that I have done on my channel by any means. However, I haven't done one in a while. I have a lot of Jane Iredell products that I use off camera, but I don't talk about as much on camera. So I pulled some of those out. I have been talking about this brand for at least seven years now. I have loved this brand forever. They have recently become very more involved with creators, so you're seeing more of it, but it's been a favorite of mine forever. And I have lots of Jane Iredell videos. All you have to do is go to my channel page, search my channel, put in Jane Iredell, and it will come up with countless videos where I've talked about their products. But today I just wanted to pull out some I don't use as much on camera. I wanted to put together a super simple, cool toned eye that isn't pink or purple. I get all of my Jane Iredell from Harbin House and I have a coupon code with them Mandy 20 that will get you 20% off all the time. You don't need to wait for a sale on other sites or anything like that. And I personally love supporting Harbin House because it is a small company and Courtney, the owner, is a very dear friend of mine. So all of the Jane that I'm gonna be talking about is gonna be linked to Harbin House. I do use affiliate links, so thank you if you choose to use them. And if you wanna see how I got this full face of Jane Iredell with a cool toned eye, let's jump in. Okay, I feel super shiny today. I used, I wanna say a new, maybe I've tried it like a long time ago. I know that AC wears it a lot, my daughter. But the Elta MD UV Clear, it's making me shiny and a little paler than normal. So I'm excited to get some makeup on this face. Let's start with Corrector. This is an oldie but a goodie. I have not used this on camera in forever. The Enlighten Plus. I'm not. I'm gonna try not to say Jane Ardell in front of everything because clearly this is a full face. But the Enlighten Plus Concealer. So this is technically a concealer, but I have always used it as a corrector. And the number one is the best shade for me as a corrector because it has a peachy undertone. When I say that's enough for like three days, that's enough for three days. That is the trick to this corrector slash concealer. You need the absolute smallest amount. And personally, I feel like it works best if you warm it up with your finger first and then just kind of tap it under the eye. Concentrate it on where I'm the darkest, which is clearly right here in the inner part. And again, this is a corrector. I'm gonna be putting a concealer on top of it. I'm really just wanting it to take away some of that darkness, which it does a good job of. But again, you need a very small amount. If you use too much, you're not gonna like it. Just the formula is gonna to get too heavy for you, but the trick is you just don't need a lot anyways. I have not used this particular foundation on camera in I don't know how long, probably since I've done the actual review on it. And I have done a review, a separate review all by itself of every complexion product that Jane Iredell carries as far as foundations. And I have not used the Beyond Matte on camera since that video. I am gonna mix M4 and M8 this is a foundation that for some reason I like to apply with the Beauty Blender more than anything else. And I have a few of those in my collection and this has just always been one of them. So I'm just gonna tap that into the skin and then I'm gonna build it up as needed. Out of their liquid foundations, this is one of the most full coverage. I think you could probably get more full coverage out of their BB cream, the newer version, but for some reason that new version, and when I say new version, I mean this one, it's like a, it's kind of like the corrector. You really don't need a lot. And if you use too much, you're going to regret it. So it's kind of like a fine line. This one is more flexible and forgiving and you can still build it up to pretty high coverage. But if you just want to use one layer, I would say it's a solid medium. And I don't want the word matte to scare anybody off. Clearly, it retained the luminosity that I had on my skin from my SPF. There's nothing flat matte about this at all. It is a very long wearing foundation on me. And it is one that I carried in my kit for a very long time because it really does tend to work on everybody. This is one of my favorite additions to the line in a very long time. Their 
Hydro, oh, I can never remember, Pure Match. I always want to say Hydro. They're Pure Match Liquid Concealer. This is in the shade 6N. This is my, is it my second one? I know I've gone through two in my kit of this particular color. I think maybe it might be my second one as well. I have a whole video on a lot of these products, so I will try to list them down below underneath where I link them if you wanna see my review of this because I also do swatches of all of the colors. It is probably my most used concealer in my kit. I have not met an age that this does not work on, but it's like any other product, depending on your skin type, depending on your age, depending on what the skin looks like underneath, you're gonna have to manipulate the product as to how much you use, where you apply it, but I've had no issues with this concealer. I really do love it. I don't have a setting powder that I use for under my eyes from Jane, so I'm just gonna use my Pat McGrath real quick. And I'm gonna use the Amazing Base for my powder. So this is a powder foundation. You can use it on top of a foundation like I'm using it today. You can most definitely use it by itself as I did in my review of this. It is the most pigmented, meaning it has the most amount of pigment in their powder formulations. So if you have a lot to cover up, this is really, really good at doing it, especially if you use their flock sponge and really press it into the areas that you wanna cover. I will often do that over breakouts on my clients, even if I've used something totally different as their foundation. I will go in if it's still showing through the foundation and just press a little bit with a flock sponge into the breakout or whatever's showing through and it will cover it right up without it being too cakey or obvious. So I'm gonna use the shade Warm Sienna. If you have a shade in your pressed base that you know works for you, I would consider or recommend going down one shade if you wanna get into the amazing base because the pigment is so highly concentrated, it can often look darker and the shades don't necessarily match up as much. So I would, again, go down one shade if you know your perfect shade in the pure pressed. I'm gonna use the chisel powder brush, which is my absolute favorite brush to use with this foundation. And I'm just getting it in both sides. And with most Jane foundations, they are formulated to be laying on top of the skin in a downward motion. I've seen a lot of people buff this product in. I mean, it's not gonna not work, but it was formulated to kind of lay on your skin. They will say like fish scales. I've tried to figure out a different way to explain it <laughs> because that doesn't always sound appealing, but it is true. So this is, you can see, it still has some luminosity to it. And I'm just gonna do that first layer laying down like they suggest. And I kind of go sideways on my forehead. This is also the more luminous of the two powder foundations. So if you have the pure press base and you find you want something more luminous, this is gonna be where you wanna look. They also carry this in a brush form, like a travel brush, and it has refills that you can put in the bottom. Now I'm gonna take the flock sponge, put the product in that, and then kind of slide it down for just a little bit. But again, you still have that kind of reflection. Let me do a close up for you. I mean, I have a layer of liquid foundation and powder foundation on my skin. A couple layers of powder foundation, a couple layers of liquid foundation, and it sure doesn't look like it. That is why Jane Ardall complexion products are number one in my book because they all just lay so beautifully on the skin and you almost just can't tell they're there. Now I am going to be using a few of their sticks. I don't use these as much as I tend to use their powder products on camera, but I did wanna feature some of these. I'm gonna start out with the bronzer. This is in the shade Sizzle. And depending on how it looks, I may end up going over it with a powder bronzer but what i like to do is i like to really warm this up on my hand versus striping it on my face and then pick up the product on the brush from my hand i just i feel like it blends out a little better that way and then i'm just going to stipple it in now notice i am doing this on top of that powder and that's because these sticks are formulated to go on top of their powder products just as much as their liquid product. So this is not going to mess up the Amazing Base. It's not going to not blend well 
on top of the amazing base because they are formulated to be used together. So again, that was in the shade Sizzle. And then I'm gonna take, because my eyes are gonna be a little bit more cool toned, I'm gonna take a cool toned blush and my favorite cool, my favorite blush stick that they have is Ferber, but that is not cool toned. My favorite cool toned blush stick is Mist. So it's a very pretty pink. This does have some shimmer in it. I'm just gonna pick it up from the stick onto a brush, stipple that into the skin. Again, you can stripe these onto your skin and then blend out. This is just my preferred way for most cream products. Like I rarely, if something comes in a stick form, will draw it on my face and then blend it out. See how pretty that is? Very pretty pink with again, a little bit of sheen. I don't even really need a highlighter, but I'm gonna use one because I wanna show it. But to me, this is technically a two-in-one highlighter and blush together. And then I'm gonna use Cosmos. Now my favorite highlight stick is Eclipse, but it is more of a gold. And while it doesn't come off gold on the skin, it is technically still a warmer toned. And this is this beautiful pinky, almost like iridescent highlight. So how I like to apply these is just kind of paint them on these two fingers and then gently tap into the skin. And again, nothing is pulling up from this amazing base. It's not patching anything, putting these cream products on top. It's just a very pretty, again, iridescent pinky shade. Let's move on to eyes. I am gonna start out with a couple of the eyeshadow sticks in colors that I have not used on camera yet. So these are the most recent kind of launch from Jane Ardell, and this is in the shade Dove Gray. It looks mo much darker in the actual stick than it does when you swatch it. Again, I have a full video on these. And because I don't want this to be overly dark, I'm going to kind of do the same thing I did with the blush stick, and I'm gonna go into the shadow stick with a brush. This is a refer number 12 pick it up from the shadow stick and then go and apply it on the eye. And this is just gonna give a softer finish. Pretty much with any color you do that technique with, it's gonna, gonna come across softer on the eye than if you were to paint it on and then blend out, which is basically the reason I do it with the face too. See how easy that was? Just doo -doo, and then I've got a beautiful shade, beautiful wash of color all over the lid and up into the crease. Then I'm gonna take the shade Midnight, which is, as you would think by that name, a black matte shade. And I'm gonna take the smudge brush from Jane Ardell and do the same thing. Pick it up from the shadow stick and I'm gonna roughly smoke out a liner using that shade. It's just, it's so easy. And then if you wanna add a little bit of life to it and don't wanna keep it all matte, I don't talk about these enough, but I love them and I use them often, the single shadows. I did talk about Sienna in my favorite one and done shadows because I love that shade. It's a beautiful brick terracotta shade. These two are ones that I used often for this specific step. This is Allure, and if you followed me for any amount of time, you know that Allure is one of my very favorite eyeshadows to use as a powder highlight from Jane. This one is a little bit different than the old version, but it still works as a powder highlight, and I use it quite often, even though I have a couple of the old versions that I'm trying to get through because I stocked up. I love them so much. And then this one is called Oyster, which is just a very bright white champagne shade. So both of these, this one, I'll swatch this one. So Allure is definitely peachier. I have used both of these as face highlighters, and they work great. Both of them have a slight sheen to them. I'm gonna use Oyster today, and I'm gonna put it on a chisel shader brush. I don't even know if they carry some of these brushes anymore. I just kind of got in my Jane collection, and I'm gonna just lightly tap that into the middle of the eye. This is not gonna, this is more for light, light reflection than big time sheen because as you see, it doesn't give a lot of sheen. And then I'm gonna take a refer number three. I'm gonna go back into Dove Gray and I'm gonna use it under my eyes. If you really wanted this to be a smoked out look, I would start with an even smaller brush, 
go in with Midnight and then use this brush with some Dove Gray on it to kind of smoke that Midnight shade out. Now for mascara, I'm going to use one of my very favorite mascaras and this is just in general, not from Jane, but just in general. The Beyond Lash Volumizing Mascara. Their mascaras were not my favorite before this was launched and now that's completely changed because this is fabulous. I will have to also talk about how much I love this primer. I've talked about this so much. However, for some reason, I like this mascara without this primer. It doesn't make sense, no rhyme or reason. I still use this almost every other day with every other mascara, unless it's a tubing mascara. I've talked about that in the past too. But like, I love this with my Chantecaille. I love it with my L'Oreal Voluminous. It's just for some reason with this, this works better by itself for me. So it has a fluffy hourglass shaped brush. This type of brush, not necessarily the shape, but the um, fluffiness of it and the non-plastic bristles is my favorite. So I'm just gonna use two coats of that and then we'll finish off with lips. I do feel like I get a little bit of length with this, but it really is what it says it is. It's a volumizing mascara, which is the main kind of difference that I see and result that I see when using this in my eyes. The last thing is lips, and I'm gonna be using a cool toned pink. This is the Color Lux lipstick in Tutu, which is probably my favorite pink. It's definitely cool toned. These are very opaque, nice lipsticks. I rarely, unless something has a very high shine to it in itself as a lipstick, will go without a gloss. So this, I'm gonna kind of go away from Jane Ardell because I will say their glosses as of right now are one of my least favorite items in the line. I don't dislike them, they're not bad. However, I really like the glosses they had before they came out with that version. Uh, they were more opaque. The ones they have right now are just okay in my opinion. So I'm just gonna take some City Lips Clear and I'm gonna put it on my hand so that I don't get pink all over this wand and then put it back down in the tube and I'm just gonna tap that on. And that is simply because I personally need that glossy finish. That is it, that is another full face of Jane Ardell makeup. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I tried to pull out some products that I don't typically use from Jane, at least on camera. Again, I will have everything I used along with other videos pertaining to each product if I have them down in the description box below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.